Hey everybody, this is round three of my playthrough of the Black Fangs dungeon scenario in the Perils of the Lost Coast adventure in the Pathfinder card game Rise of the Rune Lords box. Um, Harsk has just encountered the villain, and he managed to run it off into either the Desecrated Vault or... The Shrine to Lamash 2. And while I'm talking about that, I just remembered I have not actually shuffled these decks, which seems like it could be a very dangerous thing, because whenever I do go to these places, I want to make sure that um, that we're surprised by what's in them, and that I haven't just set the villain down, you know, at the top of the decks and just encounter the villain automatically. So that's what we'll do. We'll shuffle here. Okay. I feel relatively good about that. I don't know. I always feel like the villain's the top card. Okay, so that that's fine. So we know what we're up against, essentially. We've also scried at the end of Harsk's turn, and we know that he's got a Blast Stone item at the top of his location's deck. It's not his turn. It's Kira's turn. So we're going to increment our timer deck. We're going to unsecure this location and do a little bit of exploration. Acid Arrow is an arcane spell. If you don't have the the skill, you banish the card, so it's really just not a useful thing for uh, a cleric. She doesn't... Well, she does have a card that she could sacrifice to explore. I, I don't feel like that's the right thing to do, though. So I think I'll just increment, pass the turn to Harsk. We know what this is. This is an item. It's an intelligence check, which is a d6. A 4 to get a 4. He got it. Okay, that's good. And now he can... And this could be good, because this adds a d4 to combat. And and these guys need little bonuses like that, I am finding. I could discard the blessing. Well, I've got to discard something. Uh... And this in, in this weird one-time case, I think it might actually be better to just... No, this is a D6 and a D6. Yeah, I think I'm going to just actually... Yeah, I'm going to do the typical thing, which is spend a blessing to explore again. Ancient Skeleton. Well, this is the Ancient Skeleton henchman that there's a global rule about. Encounter this thing and... Everyone gets to encounter it, so we'll just pass it over to Kira when we're done. Skeleton is immune to mental and poison. If your check to defeat has the slashing or piercing, the difficulty increases by 3. Okay, so 8, 9, 10, 11. Because I think all Harsk has is slashing and piercing. No, he's got a bludgeoning. And he can do this, reveal this card to roll strength and melee. Bludgeoning. I think that's the way to go. So it's back down to eight. We're just going to whack it with a big stick. And his strength and melee, his strength die is a d6. By revealing the quarter staff, he gets a bonus d6. Um, he could also spend this blast stone. To give himself an extra d4. My fear is that he's only got one card in his little damage repository. So, hmm. Oh, he's got a, a shield if he takes damage. Yeah, I think I'm just going to spend this. Six. He could still fail, because he could roll a one on this d6. He didn't. Double sixes. So this henchman is dead, which means that he can now automatically attempt to close this location. Kira still has to defeat that henchman, but his job here is technically done. The problem is that in order to close the throne room, he needs Charisma Diplomacy 6. He has a d4. He just he literally cannot satisfy that that requirement. So he cannot close this location. He is the absolute worst person to have at this location. What is he doing here? Oh, there's only three more cards in this location now, so I don't even know if it's worth... If he... He could travel to a different location, but then Kira's gonna have to travel here. Alright, well, 
that's something that we'll just have to worry about a little bit later. But yeah, I need to get him out of the throne room. There's just no reason for him to continue at the throne room. Or, or there is, and I just can't think of it. Anyway, it's still his turn, but now Kira has to go to battle with the Ancient Henchman. And that's pretty straightforward, I think. D8. Is there anything? No, there's nothing she can do to help him. Okay, so what, what she's got at her disposal is she's got a plus two bonus to her melee. She's got a d6 die, and then she's got this dog slicer, which means that she can roll two d6. The, 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 the problem here is that this is a slash, a piercing instrument, so this is not an eight creature. This is a, uh, what is it, increased by three, so it's an eleven strength creature. What's the sanctuary do? Discard this card to, oh, but this is a henchman, not a monster, so a potion of ruggedness, banish this to survive survival, to succeed on survival. Okay, so what she might do, maybe, is discard this card to get yet another d6. I think that might be the way to go. Do I have another d6 in here? Yeah, okay. So that would be 3d6 to kill this skeleton. It seems, you know, like, kind of like overkill in a weird way, except... Oh, and there's a special ability here. If any d6 rolled for this weapon is a 1, count it as a 3. Okay, so... Knowing that, does that change anything? Wait a minute, does that change everything? So any 1 is essentially a 3? Oh, but only if you roll a, a 1. Okay, so that doesn't change my decision, I don't think. Okay, so we're looking for a 11 total. Six. It's a great start. Six. Well, okay. So she didn't need to discard that <laughs> that that die, uh, or that uh, dog slicer. Um, so she beats the henchman, but it was a summoned henchman, so she doesn't get to close her location or anything. And now it is Harsk's the end of his turn. So he's got his cards. He can scry. That's that ghost again. And he does not have his magic dagger. Another reason he's the worst person for the throne room right now. He cannot close it, and he cannot defeat that that ghost. Well, I mean, that's this is why the scrying ability is useful for him. So I, I think as painful as this is, I think he's going to have to travel to the temple to help her thin this deck out. And it's painful because he's going to have to discard a card. There's a admittance fee at the temple. You have to discard one one item or one one card. Um, I should have done that earlier, though. I feel that that's that's my fault. Okay, timer deck. Kira is going to explore. How come she's down? Oh, because she had to spend a dog slicer to kill the summoned henchman. So she just just explores. Blessing of Torag. Well, that's great. Because her divine die is a d12. And I don't know what that is because it's cracked. So it's a nine. Nine die, I guess. Yeah, nine. Uh, nine die. Nine wisdom. And then she's got a plus two anyway for divine. Uh, so this is discard two for strength or discard one for a blessing. So, yep, that's good. That's uh, five in her hand, so she doesn't have to draw up. I feel like we're getting to a comfortable place, but I don't know. That timer that timer deck, I feel like we're almost actually halfway through, and that is a little bit concerning. So I guess she's going to spend the blessing to investigate another blessing. Uh, let's see if she gets that one. 9 again on her d12. So she gets that. Discard to to add a die. Discard 2 for wisdom. No, that doesn't... I don't need wisdom. 
discard this card to explore. Guess what we're doing? I swear I shuffled this deck. Uh, this is a blessing again. 11. So she gets the blessing of Erastal. And as usual... Okay, so this is a dexterity bonus. We need charisma bonus is what we really, really, really need. But we don't have it. Um, I think I might hold on to this one. Why? There's no reason to hold on to that. Is there? There's really not. Yeah, I think I'll just keep keep delving. Holy light. Oh, hey, this is a divine spell for a change. Wisdom divine. Okay. Eight. This is exciting, actually. So uh, her divine bonus is a plus two. So she needs a six on a d12. Six. It is as if, though, the gods wanted her to have this. Holy Light, for your combat check, discard this card to roll your Divine Die plus 2d6 with the Magic trait. If the check is against a, a Bane with the Undead trait, well, it won't be, probably, because it'll be against Black Fang. Uh, roll your Divine Die plus 2d12. That would be amazing if Black Fang was undead, but he's not, so... Okay, that's cool. One, two, three, four, five. It's five things. What's the rule at the temple? Anything? At this location, uh, oh yeah, it's not very good. You have to discard a card when you move there. There's only two more cards here. It almost feels silly now to send Harsk up there, spend a card to get him there, but I think it's actually worth it. And And the reason for that... Okay, timer is because he needs to get healed as well. So he's there. Um, she cannot heal him yet. Can she give him sanctuary if he gets into trouble? Yes, she can cast a spell to help him evade anything if he gets into something that is really, really detrimental. So he is exploring and it's not detrimental. It's just some arcane armor. Nobody here can use arcane spells. We're just not even bothering with the check. He can't do anything further, really. So it's... Uh, well, he can do one thing. He can scry at the end of his turn. It's a blessing. Brilliant. So passing it over to Kira. So now... She has a special skill that she can forego exploration, or, or her first exploration, to reveal a card with the divine trait to choose a character at the location and shuffle 1d4 plus 1 random cards from discard back into their, their deck. Okay, so there's a card with the divine trait. It has been revealed. Roll a 2 on a d4, probably. Oh, even even worse, a 1, but plus 1, so 2. She loves 2. I don't know what it is about her, but she loves the number 2. And then I'm going to just, uh, I guess, randomly... Oh, that, that, I know what one of those cards is. Um, randomly, I am going to now... See, that's the problem when you're, when you're using cards from a different deck. Okay, so there's two random cards, two blessings, uh, back to his deck. Well, that's better than having one card in his deck. So I feel better about that already. And so she doesn't get to explore unless she spins a, po uh, a uh, blessing to do it. But we know what that is there. It's a blessing. Moving the thing over to Harsk. He's going to explore. He's going to roll a wisdom of a d6. Got a three. That's not enough to acquire the blessings of Lamash to. And so that's done. And because this location is empty, and because its closure condition is automatic, uh, it is now closed. 
So I, I wouldn't say that was the most triumphant closing of a location I've ever have ever done, but it is definitely closed. Except one thing, he forgot to discard a card when he moved up to the temple. So he is going to discard the Blast Stone, to keep me honest. And that location's closed. It is Harsk's turn. He could scry, except that they're not at a location where there's anything to scry. And I believe... I believe now we have... Um, I believe we have two locations left. Well, two where we know the villain. One, one, the villain is in one of these two locations. We also have this hanger on with just three cards. Now the problem is that because there is, because there's a location open, a villain could escape to it. And if we can't defeat the villain in battle, then the villain takes from our timer deck. So we really want this to be closed before we proceed. We know that the top card of this location is a ghost, so Kira needs to be the first person to explore this location, which is very convenient because it's Kira's turn right now. But we're closed, so I'll send her down to the throne room to fight a ghost next time. <laughs> 